Right over here, Doug. Uh, Doug Feinberg, the AP. Sabrina, it's your guys' first Final Four. What has it been like for you guys? Obviously, now we're getting to the business part with games tomorrow and practices, but what has the first couple of days been like for you guys in your first one? Um, I mean, it's been filled with a lot of fun. We we didn't really know what to expect coming in and just, you know, landing and having a red carpet laid out and, you know, us walking off. I think we've, we've smiled so much this whole um, week, these last few days for sure, and we're definitely just enjoying um, the moment, enjoying the experience and everything that it has to offer. But, um, you know, now it's game time. We're focusing on the game, but we're not really going to change who we are. We're still going to enjoy and be really appreciative of the position that we're in. Question here, Michelle. Hi, Michelle Smith, NCAA.com. Satu, can you just talk a little bit about you and Baylor? So neither one of these teams, Baylor's been here before as a program, but this group of players hasn't been here before. Do you have any sense of how the two of you kind of being, you know, new to all of this is going to play itself out on the court tomorrow night? Um, I just think that both teams are going to be really aggressive and appreciative of where they are. Um, we're not going to take it for granted that we made it to the Final Four. We've came a long way and worked all the season hard for it. And uh, the same thing applies to Baylor because they're just going to be really thankful and um, aggressive in the game. Anything else for the student athletes? One right here. This is for each of the girls, if you, if you would. Warren Williams and Oregon Duck Football News. Sabrina, uh, you guys have so many weapons, you know, on your squad. I want to know about Erin Bowley and what she has meant to this team offensively all year long. If one of you, if actually, if each of you can talk about Erin's contribution to this year's team. Do you want to start with that, Saw too, and then we'll go down the line. Thanks. Um, well, Erin Bowley is just an amazing player and a most importantly an amazing person. Um, she spreads the floor and does this. I don't know, like open up driving lanes for each one of us. People can leave her open. Uh, she has the quickest release in the whole country, and uh, she's just really important to our team as well, like player and personality-wise. Yeah, I mean, uh, Satu kind of hit it. Just her ability to shoot the ball and um, be on every single night is something that we don't take for granted, especially as guards. That opens up, you know, the the driving lane so much for us, and and her length and her size helps her at the four position as well because um, she can pick and pop, and and she can set great screens and also get to the baskets. And that's what I think she's been improving on, not really relying um, on her shot as much, but cutting, getting to the basket, getting to the free throw line, getting rebounds. And so I think she's turning into a really complete player for us, and um, I think she's just going to continue to get better every game. Yeah, touching on that, she is turning into a really complete player. Um, her defense is really great and helps us a lot, too. And with a post player, she gets us open a lot and just spreads the floor and hits the threes. And overall that, she's just a great person and a great teammate. Next question for student athletes down here. Sabrina, last year I think I saw you and Kelly in these in the hallways in Columbus on this day. You were there were some war ceremonies and things, and you guys had come off a tough Elite Eight loss. What were you thinking that day and when you have to sort of come here after you were trying to get here and you didn't quite make it? Like, do you remember what you were thinking that day? Oh yeah. Um, I I remember it all. Um, and I remember talking, it was just me and the coaches that were here and um, I told them we were gonna come back here and we were gonna come back as a team. Uh, it wasn't really fun. Um, you know, coming alone, walk, seeing the teams that you played, seeing the buses uh, get escorted while, uh, you know, you're sit standing on the street watching. Because um, I remember that like it was yesterday. Um, and so I knew that I wanted my team to experience uh, the little things that I had experienced when I was here uh, getting my awards and our coaching staff has been here. Um, and, and they wanted to bring our team. And so I think that um, we're really happy to be here as a team. And uh, yeah, I remember everything. <laughs> Next question right here. Hi, uh, Sierra Upster, Daily Emerald. Uh, Ruthie, how did Sunday's game against McCowan like, prepare you to play Brown tomorrow? Yeah, um, Sunday's game was really fun, and they're both two great post players, um, have great teams around them too. So I think uh, Sunday's game got me ready, got me physical and in the mindset, and I'm excited to take on Kalani tomorrow. Anything else for the student athletes? Okay, thank you, ladies. You can head back to the locker room. Their locker room will be open until 1.30. We'll continue now with questions for head coach Graves. We'll start right here with Doug. Kelly, Kim Mulkey said before how 
it's so difficult to get here, and there are coaches who spent their entire lives coaching who never had the joy of getting to the Final Four. You can now say that you're here as a coach on the dais as opposed to out in a clinic giving your wisdom to the future of coaches. But what is it like for you, the journey you've been on to get here, and now that you're here, have you had a minute to enjoy being at the Final Four for the first time? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying it. There's no question about it. I actually had a chance to, to spend a little bit, bit of time with uh, Coach Gino last night, and he was uh, he kind of welcomed me to the, you know, to that club, and uh, that really meant something. Uh, I think professionally, obviously, this is something that every coach wants a, a chance to, to do. Um, I was really uh, um, emotional when I saw Tony Bennett and all the things that he said, because he's been working so hard his whole life to get there. And it, it is, it's a special time. But the reality, um, I haven't really had a chance to kind of dwell on that a whole lot. I think I will when it's all said and done. But uh, you know, for us, as soon as we were done Sunday, we had preliminary scouts that night on both Iowa and, and uh, uh, Baylor. So you know, for us, it's uh, another work day. <laughs> We've got to keep grinding until, you know, until that last game. So um, yes, in, in some way, obviously, very fulfilling. I'm super happy for the team. I mean, that's why we do it. You know, that they had a chance to experience this. But uh, as a coach, I think you have to wait until everything settles, and then you, you might have a chance to appreciate it more. Question right here, Andrea. Andrea Adelson, ESPN.com. Some people have called you the warriors of women's college basketball, and the team you're facing is very post-centered. How would you describe the contrasting styles in this oh. matchup? Now, you mean warriors in that were tough? <laughs> that kind of warriors? Or are you talking about the Golden the Golden State? OK. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we, we have uh, players that I guess resemble some of them. I know Steph Curry gave Sabrina quite a shout out yesterday. I thought that was really cool. Um, and you know what? Yeah, she, she's a lot like Steph, you know, and how he's a conductor and, and is uh, always a threat to, uh, to, to make a huge play and make those three-pointers. Uh, we don't really break their film down and try to be like them. We've just kind of developed our own style. It's, it's happened over the years for me. And uh, this team just gets it. They know how to play pick-and-roll basketball. They know how to spread the floor. They love the three-point shot. Uh, it does really help that we have a hammer inside like Ruthie that we can go to if we need it. And uh, I don't know if DeMarcus has quite gotten to that level yet. You know, he's still looking up to Ruthie, I think. Uh, but it, yeah, it is. It's a fun style. And, I, and I, I hear that from a lot of people. We get a lot of coaches that come watch us practice, uh, college coaches as well. And, uh, you know, I think they try to, you know, because it, it is a fun style, I think they, they want to adopt it. And, um, you know, these guys just know how to do it well. Proud of them. I love watching them play. Question right here for Michelle. Kelly, can I ask you a variation on the question I asked Sabrina? Do you remember being in the hallways last year as all of, everything was kind of bustling around you guys and what you were thinking? Yeah, I think when you get as close as we did the, the last two years, yeah, there, there's part of you that pangs for, you know, uh, being in that, that position. I, I, I remember being with her when one of the buses went whizzing by, you know, they were going to a shoot around or a practice, and uh, she took it hard. You know, she took it hard. I, I, and, uh, you know, I didn't as hard, but it's certainly something I, I wanted to, to have happen for this group. And I, I knew we were good enough, and we were almost good enough in the past, but not, not quite there. Um, but I've been coming to these Final Fours for a long time, so um, it wasn't quite as difficult for me as it was for her. That was her first time. Question over here on the side. James Crepe with the Oregonian. Kelly, we saw that Taylor wasn't practicing. Did she have a setback? Is she shut down? And do you have to rely entirely on Maite and Sabrina? Yeah, game time decision on her. You know, um, yeah, she was getting better. And, you know, with something like that, you just never know. And, uh, yeah, she, she'd been practicing a little bit. We decided to let her lay low today, give her more strength, hopefully, for tomorrow. Question right here in front. We're very right side dominated over here. You know, I tell my class, or I tell my players to always sit in the front row and the middle. You get better grades. Did you know that? So you people in the corners, what's going on, <laughs> All right? Yeah. So. What do you think that Gino and Muffet and Kim know about this experience that you don't know yet? A lot. You know, they've been here, done that. You know, I'm that new kid on the block, so to speak. I've relied on a lot of my coaching colleagues and friends to uh, kind of help me through it. They gave me some, you know, some do's and don'ts and some tips. 
uh, including Dana Altman, our men's coach, who was in the Final Four just two years ago for his first time. And he gave me some, some really good words of wisdom and some insight. So that's really all I can, can go on. You know, I've been watching these for a long time, but until you're actually here, you don't, you know, you don't know what the experience is really like. Question right here. Hey, Kelly, Warren Williamson. I asked the girls this. I'd like to get your thoughts on Erin, what she's meant to the team when she first came here and how much she's uh, matured, I guess, as a player uh, into your team in, in this experience. Well, what I love about Erin uh, is she's an efficient player. You know, the night, uh, we, the night she scored 31 points at uh, University of Washington, she did so on four dribbles. You know, it's kind of Clay Thompson-like. So you mentioned the, the Golden State Warriors. Uh, you know, that was Clay Thompson-like. She took seven total dribbles. She had three rebounds where she took one dribble out, but I don't really count those. Uh, that's, that's what we need. We have a lot of players, you know, Maite, uh, Satu, uh, and Sabrina are comfortable off the ball, but they're all very comfortable with the ball. So you need that one player who, who really doesn't have to have the ball in their hands, and that's what she gives us. She stretches all the defenses, allows Ruthie some opportunity to roam inside one-on-one, -on -one, or allows, you know, like, like the, you know, our players said, they allow Satu and Maite and Sabrina some driving lanes. They give her space. And, and we need that. We're not the quickest team. So uh, the more space that we can create for ourselves in the half court, the better. And, and in this particular matchup, you know, if, uh, if they decide to go with uh, Lauren Cox or Kalani Brown on her, you know, she does play our, our, our technically our four spot, you know, we, they're going to have to guard her on the perimeter. And, uh, and so that, that's an advantage, I think, for us. But at the same time, she may, and, and probably will at times, have to guard one of those inside kids, and she just doesn't have the length that they do. So it'll be, uh, it'll be a fun chess match there. Question here in the aisle. And I would echo what they said. Great kid, great teammate, awesome student, uh, and uh, just, a, you know, just a, an amazing representative of our, of our university. I think she exemplifies everything that's good about intercollegiate athletics, truly. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I, I sometimes forget, Doug. <laughs> and has she talked to you about the Notre Dame connection, um, about that? And no, it, not much. Yeah, we haven't really gone down that road. No. Um, I'm curious what you think it'll take for Hebrew to be successful against Brown in the post tomorrow. 40 minutes of extreme effort and focus and concentration. I mean, she's got her work cut out for her, whether she's guarding Cox or... Uh, or Brown or, or whomever inside. Um, they're, they're tremendous players, all Americans. And, uh, you know, and she's just going to have to suck it up and, and do it like she's been doing. You know, I thought she did a terrific job on Tierra McCowan last week. And she's had to guard other really good posts. Christina Nigue's in our league, and she's had to guard her too. So, um, you know, I, I, she'll hopefully get some help from the rest of the team. But in the end, she's going to have to sit down there on that block and, and try to keep them as far away from the basket as possible. Question here in front. Kelly, you mentioned you talked to some people like Dana and they give you advice. Do you want to share a point or two they might have said of the do's and don'ts of this weekend besides? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to a coach, they said, have a great time. Enjoy it. You know, especially for your first time. And you know, we hope to be back, you know, but there's never a, an assurance of that. Uh, that was that was the Un, um, not underlying, overwhelming theme, perhaps, okay? Uh, secondly was, you know, be yourselves. Uh, don't put in that special play or that new defense or whatever. Just do with what, what's gotten you there. Uh, number three, they said, make sure you take care of your tickets. <laughs> That's a pain in the butt. And so I, I did. I told the team that first night before we get on our plane to, to come to Tampa, make sure the ticket situation is done. And then last, uh, this media. Just be, you know, just expect to, uh, to get a, dun a bunch of questions, and that's just part of it. And he said, just enjoy it. Just go with it. I had some wise person say, just steer into the, cur or into the skid. Steer into the skid. Did I get that right? That was nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm steering into the skid. Yep. Question over here in the corner. Bendel with Hypo Soups. Kelly, all. All four of these teams left standing have really had to rely a lot on their, their main five players yeah. to carry them. Um, how rewarding that is that for you as a coaching staff to, to get this far into a season you know, with that as your reality? And what does that say about this group to, to kind of carry that weight you know, throughout a whole season to, to get to this point? Well, that was the biggest question I had at the start of the year. Were we going to be able to stay healthy? 
And for the most part, we, we were. We lost Ruthie for a couple of games during Pac-12 play down the stretch, uh, and we realized that she's very important to us. We, we, we dropped those two games, the only two games we lost in, in conference play. Uh, but for the most part, we've been just blessed with great health. And I credit our training staff. They've been wonderful, our nutritionists, our strength staff. Um, and then as coaches, we've tried to manage that. And, and it hasn't been easy at times, but, uh, but I think we're, we're as healthy as we've been in a long, long time here. Uh, so credit to those, those young women for you know, ma uh, taking care of their bodies through this grind. It is a long season. We started no, uh, October 1st. I don't know what today is, but it's April sometime, right? It's April sometime. Okay. And uh, so that's a long, long season. And they've, they've just they've been wonderful. And uh, uh, you know, we've still stayed competitive. You still have to to, to stay sharp. But um, yeah, we've been blessed with good health. Plastic, but close enough. <laughs> yep. Any other questions for Coach Graves? Take one more here. Kelly, what is a, you, well, you mentioned that you've been here several times, many times, um, not as a participant. What, what, what can this mean to your program overall in the long run? This, uh, the exposure, being here, playing here, playing these, these three other okay. fantastic programs? Oh, it means a ton. You know, it's, uh, Oregon has uh, got great athletics. There's no question. It's an awesome academic institution as well. Uh, but for us to kind of get here, I think it validates, number one, our vision as coaches. Number two, the kind of talent that, that we've been able to attract. Uh, I think number three, just, uh, you know, uh, going forward, I think people knowing that this is a program that's not going anywhere. I think we're, we're here to stay. Um, and uh, again, I give my staff a ton of credit. They, they've worked their butts off and uh, carried my sorry butt most of the time. But they, uh, they've just done a great job in, in attracting talent. The coolest thing about it, people like Doug Feinberg call me back now, you know, when I text them and say, I need to talk to you. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Charlie Cream, okay, he'll, he'll answer my text now. So, you know, I think, uh, I think Gino said it best. Hey, you're a Final Four coach, you know. And uh, also said that I, that, gave me the opportunity to say anything I wanted. <laughs> I'll use some discretion there, but I'll leave that to him.